the videos that you guys haven't seen, <laughs> Hoax 1 and Mad Beef, which came before Hoax 2, but those are probably when I was skating at my best. By the time we got to Hoax 2, and I, I went into detail with this, I think it was with Justin uh, on the one podcast, um, I talked about kind of all the regrets and kind of misgivings I have about Hoax 2 and my performance on it. Um, it was really kind of a bad place for me in terms of skating. Um, I had just lost front sides because of my, a groin injury, and I Royales hadn't come out yet. And so I was <laughs> stuck to only being able to do soles, and those were really low percentage tricks back then, um, especially on kind of the sole plate, which didn't exist yet, so the little fins we had. Um, so it's just a whole bunch of, like, making excuses. But I do – John is right. I, I probably embarrassed myself with that shotgun rail, and he was a hero <laughs> – <laughs> um, but I felt like we were just going around the country and it was me doing that everywhere. Like it was really hard to skate for me at that time. Um, How but long was so that in tour? terms of people, what's that? How long was that tour? The hoax too? Yeah. I have no idea, but we, we literally went all the way across the country and not in a straight line. So it, yeah. it must, and it must have taken a while, but I, I'm notoriously bad at kind of like time. <laughs> sure. So I, I have no <laughs> concept of it really, but you'd, it's... you'd have to ask uh opalic or anyone else on the tour um, <laughs> sorry that's all right but i do want to acknowledge because we're talking about hoax too and we're talking about kind of that period um matt mance just passed away yep. uh shockingly mm -hmm. and so i would like to take a moment just to kind of acknowledge you know kind of the bright spot that he was in that era and how many people looked up to him and kind of like Definitely. what an influence he had on people because he was one of these you know we're talking about like the early days of skating. There were people like me who moved out, who dropped out of college to move out to um, California. People like the original team rollerblade, but all of us were basically in our twenties already. So these young people that started to come up, people like Matt Mance and then Roadhouse, but the people that were the true first generation of rollerbladers where rollerblading was the first thing that they did, you know, mm -hmm. whereas I, I started skateboarding, you know, I did other stuff before I, I did, even discovered rollerblades. But someone like Matt Mance, you know, he's 12, 13 years old by the time he discovered it, maybe even a little younger. Yeah, exactly. Um, for them, they represent like the first generation of rollerblading. They brought like this new style and kind of like this, uh, this real pure um, uh, approach to it. And so it was, it was a real pleasure to see, you know, guys like Matt Mance. And he really was the first one. He set the template for kind of this like this just sort of purebred natural rollerblader. And he just made it look so cool. Um, but then, you know, after rollerblading, he would become like one of the original enigmas, like kind of one of the people that people, one of the guys that people would always talk about and wonder what happened to him. And we would get these odd stories every once in a while, you know, like he was out in Vegas, maybe gotten into drugs. It's like, you didn't always get good news about him. Yeah. Um, but so I'm, I'm, it's really sad to hear that he's passed. Um, but I just wanted, I thought it was important since you guys provided the opportunity to take a moment to acknowledge his legacy and kind of what he contributed to rollerblading. And 100%. also as a friend, I mean, I, you know, a lot of us knew him and I, I loved the kid um, for as long as I knew him. So I, I'm real sorry to hear about his passing. Absolutely. I, I was actually going to mention something, uh, ask you something about that regarding him, because I know you guys had that uh, relationship back in the day on Senate. Like, um, you know, I remember seeing Day of the Rope, him, you know, Roadhouse in there, and even like Kids of America section with like Corey Nelson back in the day. Exactly, yeah. And being like a young kid, like w which we were looking to, yeah. like it was great seeing obviously everyone, but like just that the kids doing it like, oh, we, we can do it. That's so cool. And like, yeah. he was definitely him and Roadhouse were just like the coolest guys, Corey Nelson mm -hmm. and yeah. Um, we were actually even like maybe like six months ago, we were like trying to figure out a way to get his contacts because we wanted to get in yeah. touch with him, get him on the podcast oh, wow. and things like that. Yeah. But uh, we, we just like you said, it's, you know, random scattered stories. And um, yeah, d d did you have any like uh, specific uh, interactions like when you first got him on the team or like what was the first impression maybe of him during that time before you got him on Senate? With Matt Mance? Um yeah, I don't remember. I mean, nothing that different than what you guys all saw and what you knew. I mean, he, mm -hmm. to me, Matt and Randy represented kind of like this, like I was sort of saying, like this kind of this pure representation of rollerblading that was, that was naturally um, stylish. Like for a lot of us from the, from an earlier generation, I felt like we were a little more self-conscious about it. Like we had to decide how we were going to look when we were doing tricks. Like we were sort of making conscious decisions 
And I felt like they just sort of came up doing it. Like it, what you didn't have to think about as much. It was sort of natural talent. And Randy and Matt really, I think, uh, exemplified that. They, they look sort of athletic and natural and comfortable. And, and I, I thought that was sort of like the right direction for rollerblading. It's why we, it's why we, we wanted them for Senate. We wanted to promote that image, that, that direction for rollerblading. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it was, kind of, it was kind of a period. We, we sort of changed Senate kind of to reflect more their image than kind of what my image was before because I brought, I brought sort of more like a, what I thought was like a more gritty street kind of punk FU attitude. And right. so Senate kind of reflected that in the earlier days. But once you saw us moving toward like a, a Randy and Matt model, it started moving sort of toward cleaner, more athletic. And it really was kind of to promote their style of skating, honestly. That's, yeah, that's amazing. Senate was like, yeah, looking up to them, that whole Senate team, that must, that was uh, absolutely special. And I, I, I can see now that you're pointing out the uh, distinction between like the early days in Senate and like the center bat versus like the cleaner and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, you know, yeah, I, our, sorry, I was just gonna say, Austin, I, I wanted because I had another, I have another answer about your question. Like, did we run into any other people who would go on to become like superstars in skating? Right. While we were on the hoax tour, and there's kind of like a secret uh, stop on the hoax two tour that I don't think it's talked about very often. Um, but at the end of the tour, like the last place we went was Florida. And we went to visit this kid who was sick. Maybe he was terminally ill or something, but he was like into skating and he wanted to meet us. And so we stopped by and visited with him. And I'm not sure that's in the video. But then after that, before we dropped off the, the bus that we were in, um, we went to, to a skate shop and we hooked up with Josh Petty. And I'm fairly certain this isn't in the video either. I think this all happened kind of outside of the purview of the video. Um, but it was like our last stop. And so we set up this, like they are the shop set up like this launch ramp outside of the, um, the skate shop. And we ended up skating with who would go on to become Josh Petty. But at the time I remember kind of like trying to go toe to toe with them. And it was basically just a launch ramp. So we're doing like five forties and like trying seven twenties and maybe trying fakey spins or whatever. But Josh was like really good. Um, and you know, he's Josh. We had kind of this like, really distinctive style uh but it never for some reason never ended up in the video so it's kind of like this secret lost footage from the hoax 2 tour um Damn. and it's it's notable because it's josh and he would obviously go on to become a superstar 